Hi, uh, my name's Andrew, um, and I work at Boosty Research and Development, which you know. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about future radios and uh, the work we've been doing to create a toolkit for exploring new radio experiences. So first I'm going to start by explaining why radio is so important to the BBC. Um, I'm going to talk about how we've tried to come up and capture new ideas for radio and, so, and show you some hardware and software that we've built to let us prototype these kind of radios with our audiences. So first of all, why radio? So as you probably know, the BBC has 10 national and 40, uh, yeah, 10 national, 40 uh, regional radio stations. The BBC World Service broadcasts worldwide in many different languages. Um, and we've got a mixture of music and speech radio. In the UK, over 48 million people listen to the radio every week. That's over 90% of the population. So it's still a massive, uh, massively important to us and extremely popular. So BBC Research and Development works very closely with the people that make radio at the BBC. We work on very technical things like protocols for internet connected radio devices, but we also try and do more editorially led projects. For example, this is Breaking Out. It's a web-based audio drama, and it uses contextual information such as your location, your name, the weather where you are, to change the drama as it unfolds. Another example is the World Service Radio Archive prototype. So this used a combination of machine learning and crowdsourcing to try and make this vast archive available to audiences. Some of these programs hadn't been listened to since they were broadcast 45 years ago. But when we show these experiments to our audiences, the feedback that we commonly get is that they prefer to experience them on their own radios at home rather than on the web. And that's understandable since the vast majority of radio listening still happens on traditional broadcast radios. And the majority of this listening happens in the home. But working with traditional ra uh, radios, consumer radios, is very difficult because they're very closed platforms. And that's understandable because they're designed to do one thing really well and designed to be quite low cost. So we decided we needed to find out a way to get our stuff onto the radios and to experiment and make mistakes and iterate quickly. So I'm going to take a little detour and tell you the story of how we came to build our toolkit. And it all starts with the Archers. So the Archers is a British institution. It's the longest running soap opera in the world. It uh, was originally built as an everyday story of country folk. It's still extremely popular uh, with an audience of about 5 million listeners a week. But it's not everyone's cup of tea. And unfortunately, some people in our office don't really like the Archers either. And they want to banish it from their Radio 4 schedule. So that's where the idea of an Archers avoider came about. Uh, so this diagram shows the basic premise. So when the Archers uh, is going to start, you hit the panic button. It will turn to uh, a station that you actually like. And when the program's finished, it will turn back and return you to your uh, regularly scheduled programming. So we had a hardware hack day about a year and a half ago uh, where we tried to prototype some interfaces for the Archers avoider. So this is kind of the toaster model. Uh, as the archers approaches, the farmer starts rising out of the slot, and you bash the farmer back down to avoid the program. We also experimented with a kind of generic panic button approach. So you hit the red button, you can avoid any program, not just the archers. So we, you can see a Raspberry Pi in the picture, so we prototyped it um, using the BBC's internet radio streams and some kind of basic code. Um, and spent some more time on it as a side project, and we ended up with this. Caroline, leave Grey Gables behind. Must be the archers. Keep it locked. BBC Radio One Extra. Showtime now. So we had the idea for the Archers Avoider for years. Um, it, we always spoke about it in the office, but it took a cardboard box and some, frankly, terrible code to make it real. But a funny thing happened, having a box that you could show to people, and our boss liked to wave it around in the office whenever visitors came in, sparked lots of conversations. And lots of people said, ah, oh, if I had my own radio, I'd want it to do this. So we started thinking of ways of being able to capture these ideas more formally so that we could study them later. And our colleague Libby came up with these blank postcards with a crude radio shape on them, some stickers of buttons and dials that you can stick onto them. And she started taking them everywhere and encouraging people to kind of draw their own radios. She took them to meetings, workshops, the pub, children's birthday parties, and 
kind of basically bully people into collecting these ideas. So this is an example of Melanie's No Chatter radio. It kind of intelligently figures out if there's talking or DJs or adverts, and it will switch to some music, so it plays all the music all the time. So with a little prompting, it seems like everyone's got a radio in them, and we collected loads of these ideas in our Flickr pool, but we were stuck. What did we do? What do we do with them? How do we find out which ones work and which don't? Given that we know that people listen to the radio on actual radios, and it's really important to test these ideas with real people, we needed some sort of framework that let us prototype these ideas quickly, and then we could share what works with the wider radio community. So I want to show you our first prototype radio, which we call the Magic Button Radio. It's kind of just enough radio to be believable. You can turn it on and off, you can change the volume, you can flip to the next station in a list of favorites. It's got a very simple physical interface. It's got a third button, which is where the magic happens, the so-called magic button, where we've taken the avoider, which I've just described, and made it so you can avoid programs and tracks. And you can also get it to avoid using your own music that you've put on the radio. There's also a web interface for doing more fine grain control, because we're not hardware designers, so we want to keep that really simple and stick with what we're good at, which is building web applications. So the magic button is customizable, so you can avoid, which I've described. You can speak, which is an accessibility feature. It'll tell you what station's playing, what the current volume is. We're also playing around with kind of one-touch social interaction, so what would happen if you could press the magic button, it would tweet whether you like a show or not. And as you can see, this is quite extensible for other buttons, because a lot of the things we found on the postcards lend themselves very well to kind of a one-button interaction. So by creating this magic button radio, we've created some software that we hope to be able to reuse for other prototypes. So we've built some reusable software components that make integrating with the dials and lights on the physical radio quite straightforward, uh, an easy way to build a web remote, and a way to integrate with the music player built into the Raspberry Pi and play radio streams both uh, from the internet or from um, music that's on, on the hardware itself. And we can play multiple music streams, so we're quite interested in seeing what happens when you layer different audio tracks on top of each other. And then bring it all together is the prototype application. In the case of the Magic Button Radio, that's the thing that knows about avoiding and all of that sort of stuff. But we're trying to make it easy so you can take out the prototype application and put your own one in as we develop these postcard ideas. But a radio needs more than just software. It needs kind of a physicality and a familiar form. So our radio looks like a radio because when we test it with audiences, we want it to look at home and familiar to them. But because we want to try lots of different prototypes, we've worked with a product designer to create a flexible modular case. And this can be laser cut from a single piece of material. And it can be put together quickly. You don't need any glues or tools, just a few screws. And because it's modular with different panels, we can extend the size of the case depending on what kind of prototype we're creating. We can use multiple uh, materials. So we've tried MDF, cardboard, plastic. Uh, but it doesn't need to be laser cut. We've also experimented with hand cutting it for that homemade feel. Internally, it's all based on the Raspberry Pi and it's Wi-Fi. It's an IP radio. It doesn't do broadcast yet. But by using hobbyist and off-the-shelf electronics, uh, we keep the cost down, but we can also give this kind of shopping list of parts to other people who want to make their own radios. So these building blocks kind of aim to make it easy to create different prototypes that we can put together that are just enough radio to be believable and that we can test with our audiences. So what next? So the Word Service Archive prototype, which I showed you at the beginning, the web-based one, we've, uh, we're trying to make a physical version of it that uh, will help our audiences explore this vast archive from the last 45 years. And although the case looks a lot fancier, it's actually the same software and hardware inside. And also to placate the people who got really angry about our Archers Avoider, we've got the Always Archers radio that turns itself on whenever the Archers is on or downloads the podcast and plays it. And I guess we're here today because we're wondering, well, can having all these interactive devices in people's home change how performance happens? So we're working in the open. You can go to our website, 
and go to GitHub where all our code is, or follow us on Twitter, or come and find me afterwards. We're really excited to hear what your ideas are. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.